Now with the writer Salman Rushdie, for more than three decades, he lived under a death threat from Iran's supreme leader. The danger appeared to pass until August 2022, when he was stabbed more than a dozen times at a liter literary event in New York. Thank goodness he has made a remarkable recovery, documented in his new book, Knife, Meditations After an Attempted Murder. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. It nice is good to see, see you looking so well. Yeah, I'm all right, George. I'm, I think I'm, I'm, to my surprise, and I think to everybody else's surprise, pretty well. Well, that's, that, that is so great. And I wonder what role writing this book has played in your recovery. I know it can't have been easy to write. No, it was, for a start, I didn't want to do it. Then I discovered I kind of had to do it. And then I really got into it and wanted to do it. Why did you have to do it? Because anything else seemed dumb mm -hmm. to do when there was this huge subject sitting right in my face. And so then I thought, okay, yeah, because it became my way of controlling the narrative, if you like, you know, fighting back. Not giving the attacker the power. Exactly. And, and that's what it felt like. It felt like taking the power back. Uh, to go back to that moment, I mean, you write about it eloquently in the book. You believed the moment of your death had finally arrived. Yeah. No, no question. I mean, I was lying there in this kind of lake of blood, which was mine and was expanding. And, and I remember thinking in a kind of completely calm way, oh, yeah, I think, I think I'm dying. And then, fortunately, I was wrong. Thank goodness you were, you were wrong. I assume that time probably slows down. Time did measure. a very weird thing. It, it, it's some, some, it seemed to go very, very fast at moments and very, very, and, and kind of would eternal, be slowed down to be like an eternity at other times. So I had a very weird experience of time in, in, that, in that extreme situation. You, you title the book Knife, and in some ways, the pen is your knife. Yeah, I mean, I think what I felt is that the book itself, it, it, I mean, it's about a knife, but it also kind of is a knife. You know, I mean, it's, it's like my, I don't have any guns or knives. I mean, I, this, is, this is the tool I use. And I thought I would use it to fight back. So, so you know, if you find yourself in a knife fight, get a knife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we met uh, back in the 1990s when you were still under a death threat uh, fr from the Ayatollah at the time. Had you thought the threat had passed? Yes. Yeah, because, you know, I've been living here, George, for close to 25 years in New York City. And I'd, in that time, I've done hundreds of public events, you know, book tours, literary festivals, readings, lectures, etc. And there's never been a hint of a problem until, until this time. It's hard to, to describe a book about an attempted murder as a love story. But in many ways, that's what this is, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I always thought there are three people in this book. There's, there's me, there's him, who I refuse to use his name, and there's my wife, Eliza, who, who you know, we had met five years before this attack took place and had been actually probably the happiest relationship of my life, you know. And then she was just astonishing in taking care of me and in looking after things and taking charge of things. and and bringing me back, bringing me back, you know? And so, yeah, she's the heroine of the book. You had a premonition this might happen? I had a bad dream. I mean, you can explain the bad dream because the place I was going to lecture was called an amphitheater. So I had a dream about being in an amphitheater, except in my dream, it was like the Colosseum. It was like a Ridley Scott movie. And there was a, a gladiator with a spear stabbing downwards and I was rolling around on the ground. And I woke up from the dream quite alarmed. And at first I thought, oh, I, I don't want to go. And then I thought, don't be stupid, it's a dream. You know, nobody, you don't run your life because you had but a bad dream. But did it dream. tempt you at all to believe in the supernatural? I mean, for a minute it did. And then it didn't, and maybe it should have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll have, probably have some difficult moments coming up again. The trial of your attacker was put off until after the book mm -hmm. came out, but you must testify, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I believe the DA wants me to testify, and so I will. I mean, that's okay. There's nothing I will say on the witness stand that I haven't already said in this book. You promised yourself that you'd take your life back. You said it again mm -hmm. in this interview. Has it happened? Yeah, more or less. I'm just a, with, a bit more, with a bit more care. Well, thank you for coming in. Congratulations on the book. Knife is available tomorrow.